common species began, we were a small number and we operated very much like nature, which is on a closed cycle. Things grow, like the trees behind you, they die, they go into the earth, the earth breaks them down, and you essentially keep a closed system with the sun back there providing us the energy source. Well, I'm Bill Goff. My training has been in electrical engineering at Princeton University. And my original work on the fusion torch was when I was working at the Atomic Energy Commission in Washington, D.C. I'm George Miley. I'm a professor of nuclear plasma and radiological engineering, plasma being the key word, uh, at the University of Illinois. I guess I became interested in energy and the environment too back when I was a kid growing up in western Pennsylvania. My dad worked in an oil refinery. I had to keep my window closed to keep soot ash from coming in or my mother would get after me. We've been so greedy as a society worldwide. We're consuming all the oil that has been created centuries, thousands and thousands of years ago. We're using it up in just a few brief years. That's not the only thing. We are also using up all of our other natural resources, minerals, you know, copper, metals. And that's going to get worse as the populations increase and as the uh, desires of most of the world to have more material items increases. And when we do recycle physical material, every time we do, it gets a little bit more, I'll call it polluted. Recycling as we are doing it now is buying us time. We separate papers and put that in the paper recycle, cans and something else, so in bottles. But that's not what we're talking about. Most of the materials that we have been producing, all the materials we've been producing, break and become molecular structures. There are only 92 basic elements in nature. If we could return to those 92 elements, then you could restructure anything you need. The myth has been propagated that fusion is too far off. There are small devices that could be developed much more rapidly. But as time went on, I began to realize that fusion is one of the fundamental new sources of energy for the long term. There is no other way that we know of to take complex, all the complex chemical elements on this planet and break them back down into the basic elements. And we're proposing the proton boron cycle. Boron <laughs> is, <laughs> is an element. It is one of the most plentiful elements. It's a very plentiful element on the Earth. It's also essentially an infinite source of energy for us. That you could run all the power plants that are necessary in the world for thousands of years on the boron resources mm -hmm. that we have available. It is a beautiful fuel for fusion because you have a plant that's radiation free and could be highly efficient. Fusion involves bringing together light elements to form a heavier element with the release of energy. It's also excellent for electrical production because the energy comes out as charged particles. Well, the fusion torch has four constituent parts. First is the plasma generator. Then you have the section where you have the ionization and dissociation of the elements and the material that you inject into the system. So this is where the waste would go and it would be broken down into constituent elements. Now while you're doing this, you're circulating energy and that would be the energy recovery section. When you burn coal or any fossil fuel, you're getting about one EV per atom. If you use the, what we were talking about, the proton boron cycle, you're getting uh, about 4.7 million. So you don't need too much material to produce a lot of energy. Today, after billions of dollars being spent, we have a whole reservoir of fusion technology, the capability of using that technology to produce ultra-high temperature plasmas. They can be used for those items 
that are so either toxic or so uh, desirable. When I use the term midterm, I'm meaning that it requires some additional research and development to get there. One of those midterm applications would be the flue gases of a coal plant. You could break those gases down so that carbon could be recovered directly and the oxygen could be released to the atmosphere. The radioactive waste can be separated. At the total waste that this country produces is about one-third of a quad and we use a hundred quad of energy so it's a very small percentage. If you look at all the material that is in the waste you find that over 75 percent are in the hydrocarbons. They come from food waste, paper, plastics. So you can produce a tremendous amount of hydrogen which would be ability to fuel a hydrogen economy. It comes out of about 56 million cars using hydrogen could be powered by the wastes of the country. We can't continue to pull things out of the earth, push them through and try to dispose of them. We're running out of supplies on the earth. This type of economics has been studied for many, many years. The economy becomes a subsystem of the ecology. Because this seems to me common sense that <laughs> we have to have a closed cycle. Nobody's putting an effort into this yet. Most people don't even believe they can close the material cycle, don't even think about it. They're thinking about how to recycle better, how to pollute less. But none of those get you anywhere as in the long run. And the long run is not so long away because we're already in serious, serious problems. The, the point is we have this tremendous problem. Bill and I think we're suggesting a solution, but regardless of whether or not you agree with us, <laughs> we're going to have to solve this.